Today we are going to make homemade artisan pandoro. It's a typical Christmas dessert and takes a lot of patience to prepare because it takes two days. So this is a recipe for experienced bakers. The original Pandoro recipe was filed here in Veneto, specifically in Verona, by Domenico Melegatti. He filed a patent for a soft, eight-pointed star-shaped cake. There are two versions of Pandoro, one flaky and the other not. Rolling out the dough in folds with a rolling pin is called the flaking technique and it's better to use when you don't have a mechanical mixer. Making gluten mesh is very time consuming and tiring. We'll work by hand using the flaking technique. but you can use this recipe with a mixer too. Actually, we're going to prepare a poolish and a pre-graft, which is the first dough. Then there will be hours of rising and a second dough that will let rise alternately as the different folds are made. The images you're seeing right now are about the pre-fermentation stage of the dough. It's made from two and a half ounces of room temperature water, half a tablespoon of honey, preferably acacia honey because it's softer, four and a quarter ounces of type one flour or high gluten flour, perhaps Manitoba, and two egg yolks mixed with yeast. We have used half an ounce of fresh yeast. Now an hour has passed and we're ready to combine the pre-dough with the poolish. This is the poolish, this is our pre-dough. So I'm going to slowly pour all the ingredients in here. So now in this bowl we're going to add our pre-dough and our poolish. If you want to use vanilla beans, you can put the flavor directly into your poolish, which will then infuse for 12 to 13 hours, and this way it will be enriched with those fragrant essential oils. In my case, I chose to use scented powdered sugar, flavored with vanilla and vanillin, because I didn't have enough natural vanilla beans with me. Now I'm thoroughly cleaning the glass bowl because some of the dough, being very sticky, has remained stuck here. Then you can prepare everything in the first steel bowl, except for the poolish, which may need to rise in the fridge to reduce residue. However, I wanted to show you the different steps. so. Let's add this poolish, which is more liquid and should flow more easily. Now let's gradually add the flour and the egg yolks. We've prepared 200 grams of flour and we'll add it slowly. We have four egg yolks. We also have 100 grams of powdered sugar and 120 grams of butter. The butter will be added in small pieces only at the end. 
into flakes and only at the end. Fifteen minutes of working it with your hands. This is the result after adding all the flour as well. So if you don't have a stand mixer, arm yourself with patience and you have to get a dough that also starts to come together. At this point, we gradually add the powdered sugar and four egg yolks, alternating them. This is my vanilla powdered sugar. This is also the vanilla that I'm going to add now. I remind you that you can replace the vanilla with natural vanilla, but in that case, I suggest you add it to your Polish, the one that has to rise overnight. We immediately put in one of our yolks. Don't worry if two of them fall in. Have patience, it's the same. And we start to work the dough again with our hands. When we finish absorbing the yolk and the sugar, we're going to add more sugar and more yolks. We have to put them all in. We've reached the final stage, so I, being pretty skilled at this, add all the sugar and the remaining three yolks directly. You could take it slower, knead it, and you should get a fairly even mix. Now we've reached the part where our 120 grams of butter flakes must be added. Once the entire load of butter has been mixed into the initial dough, this is what we have. Now either wrap it up or cover it with a large lid and let it rise for an about two hour period until its volume significantly doubles. Meanwhile, let's make an emulsion which usually gives the typical aroma of Pandoro. So guys, we were lucky I had a packet of white chocolate in the fridge, but according to the recipe ingredients, which you'll see later in the description, two tablespoons of cream is required. All right, since we also need to add several grams of butter to this, we're talking about 80 grams of butter. I'm replacing the two tablespoons of cream with two tablespoons of water because I'm not going out to buy cream specifically for this. And it's pretty much the same thing because the fat that's in the cream is also in the butter. So you're not making any substantial changes. You can do this and use water. Here our scale shows 59 grams, which is still fine. It's really 60 grams considering any error that the scale could have when measuring. Now let's combine the different parts of this emulsion. This is the dough to prepare for the emulsion. We've added water, butter, and white chocolate. Now we need to melt everything together. I'm using the microwave, but you can use a double boiler, which is the more traditional option. Here, the butter and chocolate are almost completely melted in a bain-marie. At this point, the two hours are up and we're going to work on our dough, which has now risen nicely with the ingredients needed for the second dough. So we'll take it. I'll put it under the camera now so you can see it. Perfect. To this dough, which is still sticky, we need to add the ingredients for the second dough, which I'll read now. 400 grams of flour. I'm using type 1 flour. We said that's a flour. 
four egg yolks again, 240 grams of sugar, 120 grams of room temperature butter that I've already prepared, divided into different butters. And I'll show you basically how to combine them. You should alternate the powders with eggs. I'm setting the dough aside for a moment and bringing you closer to the flour. I put and minced a vanilla bean emptied of its seeds because we put the seeds in the emulsion in the refrigerator. I'm going to get powdered sugar. And instead of alternating them in the dough, since I'm working by hand, I'm mixing all the powdered sugar with the flour and I'm making sure to homogenize everything using a spoon. And I'm making sure that it's all mixed well. These are powders, so they should be incorporated into the dough anyway and they don't interact or interfere with each other at all, so don't worry. And let's go ahead and add our flour a little bit at a time. At this stage, all the bubbles will probably pop, but that doesn't matter. What a vanilla scent, you guys. I decided to make my Pandoro using vanilla, vanillin, and chopped pistachios. The emulsion, as you've heard, will likely be made with a series of ingredients based on white chocolate and vanilla. After some kneading, the dough turns out like this. We still need to finish adding all the powders, so I took and added 100 grams of pistachio flour to the powders I still need to add. Now let me show you. Mix everything together again. These are the powders I'll add next. We're almost ready to incorporate the butter and the chilled emulsion. I'll bring out the dough and show you how to work it with the last powders. Then I'll head over there to grab what I need. Of course, patience is always a virtue in the kitchen, so you should knead the dough patiently. Okay, so the dough's here and it's rested, so the gluten network has kind of relaxed a bit. In the meantime, I got the emulsion that thickened up from the fridge. Now let's go ahead and add the fat part, which is the emulsion, it's the butter, and in flakes at room temperature for a while now, so it should be very workable. Now we're going to throw down the dough again, the butter on top, as you can see. Now I'm going to get some of my emulsion and massage it right here. The emulsion is nice and cold from the fridge. This is good because you don't want to melt the butter too much. We're working in a room with a temperature of about 18 and a half degrees. Working the dough with your bare hands, you'll hardly be able to get a strong enough gluten network if you don't use a few little tricks. First of all, the dough needs to stay cold, so if the working temperature doesn't allow it, let it rest in the fridge again, inside a bowl for a few minutes. The dough is going to be very sticky at first, so it also needs to be left to rest to let the flour absorb different ingredients. As you can see, I'm now in the next phase, and you can help yourself like me, with a little flour of the same kind to roll out the dough. Working the dough requires creating several folds. 
cool. This lets me know the temperature is just right. You don't have to make it super thin because it could tear. You can see the various overlapping folds. One, like a book two. Now I take this dough and put it in my purity bowl. I'll let it sit here so it can rise and double in size for a couple of hours. I got this from a pastry shop. It's an aluminum mold that needs to be buttered so you can then lay the dough in it. So now the dough is here rising. Let me show you. It's been about one and a half hours. This is the result of the rising. We take out our dough and make another set of folds. We're on the first one. Hand with fingers. If possible, we spread it out like this. Trying not to burst all the bubbles this time, we want them to grow. Then we proceed to make the new folds. At this point, we flip it. Let's go and do the last set of folds. The dough is gradually drying. in such a way to limit the breaking of the bubbles. I flip the dough. It grows a bit bigger. Perfect. We spin and compact. Here is our round dough. Now I'm going to put this dough in the mold. 